Committee on Parole is called back to order. The time is 1.44. Our next case is Mr. Darrell Lowry. Mr. Lowry, would you please give us your full name and DOC number? Darrell Ramon Lowry, 304859. Thank you, Mr. Lowry. <clears throat> Mr. Lowry, let me explain our process to you. First, I'm going to read some information into the record. Then we're going to conduct a parole interview with you. At the appropriate time, we will allow those persons who wish to have input to speak. Uh, speaking here today on your behalf is your sister, uh, Jamisetta Martin, uh, your niece, Samantha Dimmer, and your cousin, Stacy Lowry. Also speaking uh, in opposition is Demetrius Rivera and Lucretia Lewis. Uh, at the end of the hearing, you'll have an opportunity to say whatever you'd like to say to the board to make a statement, and then we'll vote. Do you understand our process, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This, this is the matter of Darrell R. Lowry, DOC number 304-859, date of birth May 18th of 1967. He's classified as a third felony offender. He has a parole eligibility date of August the 1st of 2021, an adjusted good time date of August the 6th of 2032, full term date of September the 25th of 2038, he is serving a 40-year sentence on the charges of manslaughter and second-degree kidnapping. Mr. Lowry, is that information basically correct? Yes, sir. Mr. Lowry, your case has been assigned to uh, Ms. Bonnie Jackson. Would you please answer any questions she might have? Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Lowry. How are you doing today? Uh, good afternoon. Um, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. <clears throat> I have some questions I want to ask you um, about yourself as well as about uh, this case. Um, are you 56 years old? No, ma'am. I'm 54. They got my uh, 67. It's 69. I was born in 69. May 18, 69, 1969. Why do you think they have your date of birth wrong? Uh, probably a mistake. Uh, they had it gotten it from somewhere, but that's okay. <clears throat> and how long have you been incarcerated? Uh, 25, 25 years. So you were around 30 years old when this crime was committed. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. 29. That's around 30. Yes, around 30. Um, you're classified as a third felony offender. Yes, ma'am. That, that may you, have, mean. you have priors for all, all drug charges. You have two prior convictions for possession of cocaine and one conviction for distribution of cocaine. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And I show that on each one of your charges, each one of your sentences, you are either revoked on probation or revoked on parole. So you don't have a, have a history of not doing very well on supervision. Why is that? Well, I was still, still uh, messing with drugs. That's why. Okay. You know, how much education? How much education do you have? I got my GED. Uh, before you came to prison, how much education did you have? Oh, I went to the I went to the twelfth grade. But you, you didn't graduate. Yes, ma'am. I I quit, got on drugs, and then go back, and, and that's why. Okay. I, I got my GED. When did you get your GED? Uh, in prison. In what, 90. One of your previous periods of incarceration? Yes, so how old were you when you started using drugs, do you think? Ooh, 15. What'd you start with? Uh, well, marijuana, then went to crack, crack cocaine. That's my drug of choice. 
uh, how frequently were you using? All the way up to I got, uh, till I got locked up this, 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 when I caught this chart. I mean, how often were you using? I was using every day, every day, every, all night, you know. How were you supporting your habit? Well, I wasn't doing no crazy stuff like breaking in housing, breaking in cars, or going in the store, shoplifting, none of that. I was just ripping, running cars, making transactions, you know. Selling. You were yes, selling you're selling for someone? Well, yes, well, that's how I got high, you know. Basically selling for someone to get high. So did you ever have a, a, a job during this, a real job? I had a job. What was your job, a real job? Uh, I was working at the chicken plant in Conagra. Okay. In uh, Farmville. Yeah. Okay. I was working up till I got locked up. Well, let's 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 talk about this crime. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Who is Derek Mitchell? Uh he a friend of mine. We were all we were all close. He was very forgetful and and that what happened in like the you know the drugs and stuff you know that's how I, Mr. Uh, Mr. Lewis got killed you know. What does being forgetful have to do with Mr. Lewis getting killed? That was well when Derek had Mr. Mitchell had placed some drugs out there in the woods. But he had it, and he thought Mr. Lewis had got his drugs, and that what made him, but he found the drugs. So uh, this man was beaten to death. Well, he, he, he beat him, but he wasn't, didn't mean to kill him. But when he, you know, he didn't mean to kill him. Oh, but, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. He died as a result of being beaten. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. He, he died because he didn't get no no uh, medical attention. What was your role? My role was basically trying to help him uh, cover up cover up the body. You know. Go back before the before it became a body. Didn't you hold the victim down? While, ma well, I'm just telling you what it, what you know what the police report says and what the information says that you held him down while Derek Mitchell beat him with a piece of wood. No, ma'am, I ain't do none of that. They they the they they the, they just mis mis misprinted it. By me, uh, they didn't want me to testify in my brother behalf. What does that got to do with anything? You're, you're confusing me. Because we were all we was all there. We we just rolled up there with him, and and something and, and, and one thing led to another, and that's how we got caught up in 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 in. in Well, all I all I can say is the reason that you got a manslaughter instead of a second degree murder is because you cooperated and you gave a statement, and it indicated that you held Mr. Um, Lew, uh, the victim down uh, while Mr. Mitchell beat him with a piece of wood. And then you all took him and left him in a put him in the trunk of the car, right? Yes, ma'am. And then you drove him and left him at an abandoned house. Well, he would that was Derek Daddy's house. Again, I don't care whose house it was, nobody was living there, right? 
Yes, they, he was living there. They was living there. They were all living there. Tyler was living there with him and Derek. They were both standing there. He just would leave Tyler up there. So, again, according to the information, I understand what you're what was Mr. Lewis put in the trunk of the car? Yes, ma'am. And he was driven around and he was taken to an abandoned house and he had to be carried into the house because his legs were broken from the beating. Not really. His, he wasn't, his leg wasn't broken. I don't know why they said that. Did he did he walk into we, that? We just, did he we walk just carry, We just carried him in the house because he had him tied up. And that's why they, they, we carried him in the house. Me and Derek. So you were involved, you were involved in the beating, you were involved in carrying him in the house, and y'all left him there overnight. And y'all left, somebody was left there to watch him. I don't know who that was. But when he came back the next morning, Mr. Lewis had died from his injuries. Is that correct? Yeah. That had to be a pretty bad beating. You, know, you just don't die from you know, a beating unless it's a pretty brutal and severe beating. Very I, right. And so what did y'all do when you went back the next morning and discovered that Mr. Lewis had died? I panicked and, and tried to help him get rid of the body. Okay, how did y'all get how did y'all do that? Well, we, we tried to uh we didn't have no shelf or nothing to, to dig the uh, the grave, so we throw some gasoline on it. We knew. Me and Derek. You threw okay, so gasoline on. Right. And you uh lit the match. Yes, ma'am. Like, match on it, right? Yes, ma'am. When the body wouldn't burn up, y'all came, uh y'all tried to dig a shallow grave and yes, put it in the shallow grave. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. All because Mr. Mitchell thought the man had stolen his drugs and then he found the drugs. Yes, ma'am. Why would you agree to participate in something so horrific? At the time when it happened, we didn't, we didn't me and my brother didn't know that this was going to help. You know what I'm saying? So well, Once you realized it was going to happen, why did one, why you didn't try to stop it? Why did you I tried try, try to stop it. I tried to tell Derek, no, Derek, don't do it. Don't, 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 don't beat him like that. You know what I'm saying? I tried to stop it. But he's like, get back. You ain't got nothing to do with this. You know what I'm saying? Charlie been, been, been getting Derek for a long time. They were taking back in. You know, leave, you know, leave him at the high, leave okay. his rope over there. All right, okay, that's 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 fine. That's fine. Now let's let's move forward and talk about the last twenty five years. Okay, yeah. the last twenty five years that you've been in prison, uh, you've had forty seven write ups yes, in the last uh, twenty five years. Uh, the last one was in 2022. That was a theft. Yes, what was that about? Well, we get some bleach, some bleach at the uh, machine. I was watching the bus. So when I got through watching the bus, I tried to get me some bleach. And uh, but I never come out the kitchen with the bleach though. I never okay. come out the I never came out the kitchen with the bleach. Yeah, but you so intended to, you just didn't get a chance to. Yes, why, are we, why are we taking bleach? What are we gonna do with bleach? 
as we reach uh, our close, we bleach our clothes and stuff where it won't be like it'll be like snow white. And you got written up for that. And then mm -hmm. in 2021, you had some write up. Yes, ma'am. You had a 30D. Yes, ma'am. Unauthorized items so tell me what that was about Ooh, that was just being stupid and crazy i know but what you do that was stupid and crazy this i don't know i really don't even i don't even know miss 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 jackson i just who the write-ups that i got they were very crazy and, and stupid you know I'm, I'm very, very well, sorry. Well, you know, what, what you worry about is somebody's been in prison for, at that time, you know, 23, 24 years, and you're still getting in, getting in trouble, still making poor decisions. No, well, I'm kind of straight up trying to straighten up and fly right now, you know, because my mother, my mother died on me and my daddy right died. Here. Already here now. Really? Now, another thing that I noticed is you haven't had a lot of programs. Can you explain to me why you, you don't have any many programs? Well, I, I went to programs. I got in them. I went to uh, Living in Balance 1 and 2. Living in Balance 1 and 2. I went to AA. AA. Uh, I got some certificate, but I just don't know where they at, though. I got some certificate but, up under my bed. But usually, usually your programs are listed on your master prison record because the prison will have a record of the programs that you've taken. And the only ones that they have listed for you are, like you said, living in balance, uh, one and two. And then it looks like you enrolled in Living in Balance again uh, in 2000, in this year. That's you right. enrolled in phase two in 2023. But then, as I read on, you were dismissed from the program. Yeah, he said I missed two days, uh, missed two, two consecutive days. So that it kicked me out. So I enrolled again and I finished it. I fi I completed uh the phase. I'm I'm okay. Well, okay. but those are the only programs that I see. I don't see thinking for a change. I don't see. Uh, any uh, other substance abuse programs. I don't see anger management. I don't see victim awareness. I just, why have I you a, not? I took, a victim, you? I took a victim awareness and uh, David Wade. I suppose to have a certificate of that. Well, again, the only thing I can go by is what the record shows. I don't, I don't have anything to indicate anything besides living in balance. Yes, ma'am. Really don't. You have um, uh, a moderate risk and you have a, a poor and fair institutional record. Um, Warden, what can you tell me about Mr. Lowry? Mr. Jackson, not much. Um, uh, he's currently uh, working uh, in our kitchen as a kitchen worker. He's been in there for a while. Uh, he and I talked just the other day. Uh, I, I, that's the life I give to him to try to make sure that I understand about how, what kind of image you need to show to some of these young offenders around here. We have some issues with some of the young offenders around here. 
he's been incarcerated for a long, lengthy amount of time. And uh, that should be a way he ought to actually be, should be trying to give back to the offender population, try to talk to some of those younger guys and from the experience he had. Thank you, Warden. Right, now we hear from your supporters, uh, your sister, uh, Jim, Jamisetta Martin. Ms. Martin? Yes. Yeah. Hello. Um, <laughs> yes, um, I don't know where to begin, but Dar is a good person. He is, and um, he was just around the wrong crowd, easy to influence, under the influence of drugs. Um, he's remorseful. I, we are remorseful. The family are. We recently lost our mother last year. He's number one supporter. Um, and we're just sorry. And, and he has a great support system behind him, you know, to, to get him a good job and and give back to society. I, I, it's just, I don't know. Mm. Thank you very much, Ms. Martin. We appreciate your comments. Uh, Ms. Samantha Dimmer? Yes. Yes, ma'am. If you'll I'm, introduce yourself and tell us what you'd like us to know. My name is Samantha Dimmer. I am Daryl Lawyer's niece. I am his um, other sister's daughter. Um, Uncle Daryl has always played a huge role in my life when I was younger. He was my, that was my father figure. You know what I'm saying? I understand people are human, they make mistakes. Yes. But before then, my Uncle Daryl, I mean, he was just that, my father figure. And so over the years, I have grown to, you know, accept the fact that he's in there, accept the fact that maybe one day he can get out. He done lost his dad and his mom while in there. And so I feel like he's suffered enough. And he's a great, I mean, he's a, a very good person. I already have him a job lined up. I already have him a place to live. I just want him home. Like if anybody, if you guys can find it in your hearts to understand, you know, and believe in second chances for him to just get out and prove to you guys and everybody else that have seen him, you know, behind those four walls to just to, make, to prove to you guys that he can actually be you know, a decent human being, and he's learned from his mistakes. That's the most important thing, him learning from his mistakes. And I actually believe that he has. Well, thank you, Ms. Zimmer. We, uh, Ms. Dimmer, we appreciate uh, your comments. Uh, now we'll hear from Stacy Lowry. Yes, uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can, thank you. If you'll introduce yourself, yes, what you'd like us to know. Yes, sir. I'm Daryl's first cousin, uh, Stacy Lowry, and I grew up with him. You know, when our grandmother was down here in Ruston, and um, they let you know that Daryl's type of person, like his sister said, it's kind of easy to get influenced, but the guy's a good guy. I mean, you can ask maybe a thousand people around Ruston, they'll tell you the same thing. But, you know, he just... He'll do anything for you. The guy's not not violent, not a violent person, never has been. Mm. You know, us growing up, he always would, would take up for the you know, younger kids, me and my cousins, you know, or he'd step in and say, hey, y'all stop that. You know, he'd break stuff up. He never been an instigator. He's never been a person that goes out and starts, you know, trouble with anybody. And I know it's been a long time since he's been locked up. And, my heart goes out to the to the victim because that's my cousin on my, my mother's side too. So I mean it's kind of like a double edged sword. I mean when you look at it, you know, and um but twenty five years is a long time. And I think that he's learned his lesson. Maybe he can get out and make a make yourself a productive citizen. And I just ask, you know, y'all you know, just give him a chance. It's, it's giving a chance to get out here and just, you know, like I say, lost his mom, lost his dad, you know. Um, 
it's just, you know, she, she's been there. She stood there as long as she could. She held on as long as she could to try to see her kids get out. But um, my thing is, I think, you know, just give him a second chance. Let him, you know, at least get out here and be productive and get another chance of life. You know, 25 years has been a long, it's been a long time. So, I mean, I was just, y'all feel it in your heart to let him out. You know, give him another chance. You know, that, that, that'll mean, that'll mean the world. Thank you, Mr. Lowry. We appreciate your comment, sir. Thank you. Now we're here from the opposition. Uh, Demetrius uh, Rivera. Ms. Rivera. You're, you're on mute, ma'am. You can unmute your microphone. No, ma'am, we can't. I can read your lips, but I can't hear you. Oh, well, ma'am, we still can't hear you. No. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am, we can. Good. Thank you. If you'll I can't introduce hear you. Yourself. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, we can hear you. Can you not hear me now? Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Uh, if you would please uh, give us your full name and tell us what you'd like us to know. Uh, I am Demetrius Rivera. Uh, <clears throat> good afternoon. Afternoon, ma'am. In the interest of the court, I want to state the effects of the criminal actions of Darren Lowry and how his actions have had an effect on me. I am Demetrius Rivera. Since the murder of my brother, Charlie Lavelle Lewis, known as Lucky, occurred, I remind myself often with tears streaming down my face that Mr. Lowry thought he was lucky when he made the choice to join and participate in a cruel, ruthless, and unforgettable violent crime that involved my brother's abduction and death. Clearly, I recall sitting in the courtroom as if it was minutes ago hearing the inhumane acts of crime performed freely and willingly by Mr. Lowry and how my brother's death unfolded. The criminal acts included first kidnapping Charlie and transporting him in the trunk of a car while parading around our small town in Ruston, Louisiana, where the public could witness Charlie being beaten and bleeding. Continuous beating occurred along with kicks in his head and in his side in the presence of the community at specific stops in the moment. My brother begged with screams not to kill him. And he also stated, I didn't take the drugs. But the beating continued into a wooded area on the outskirts of our town in the woods. Primarily, Charlie was beaten with a two by four piece of wood, which caused hemorrhaging to his brain from the blunt force of nails that penetrated into his skull. Charlie was tied up in an old dilapidated, worn down countryside wood frame house with no windows, so he would not escape. Afterwards, Charlie was buried in a shallow grave 
and covered with pine. Afterwards, his body was set on fire so he could not be identified. But, but one thing, my God, my God calls a heavy rain with intense thunder and lightning to pour it out. And Mr. Lawrence's car that he was riding in, it got stuck in the mud. And they couldn't get out. They had to leave the car and go down two miles to a neighbor's house to use the phone for someone to come and get them. There was blood on their clothes and they asked the neighbor where they had walked three miles to use. Ms. Ms. Rivera, Ms. Rivera, we know all of the facts of the case. Uh, we need you to wrap up. Uh, it's usually we allow three minutes and you've gone to over four. So uh, we need you to wrap up. Nightmares. Stalk me at night as I still need help, emotional help due to the death of my brother. I experienced uncontrollable crying, predicted anxiety attacks, sleepless nights, unplanned anger, episodes of depression and bitterness. My brother was innocent all alone but was not convinced that he was innocent. Yet, he was continued to be beaten. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, we're gonna, we're gonna have to ask you to wrap up, I'm sorry. Thank you very much for your comment. I will wrap up in concluding. <clears throat> the drugs were found. Mr. Lowry, Jesus Christ can be found as well while serving many more years of incarcerated consequences, knowing Thank that you. Jesus Christ will forgive, and so have I. Thank you, Ms. Rivera. We appreciate your comments, ma'am. Uh, Ms. Lucretia Lewis. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Ms. Lewis. My name is Lucretia Lewis Hardaway. I'm the only child. I had five children. So my dad had five grandchildren. Well, I had six, but now I have five living and 11 grandchildren. My first issue is these guys was drug dealers. They were already on the street destroying lives. And through that drug dealing, they kept destroying more lives and took my father's life. The Christian in me forgives, but I can't forget. Um, my dad was a good guy. And his cooking, the last memories I have of him is being in the grocery store. And I knocked over a whole display of pickles, an entire display. He didn't get mad. I thought I was going to be in trouble. He didn't get mad. Later, we went home to play catch. And the ball went in the woods. And I said, I'll go get it, Daddy. And he was like, no, I'll go get it. And I said, no, I got it. He was like, Lucretia, don't go in there. And I went anyway, covered in red ants everywhere. Everywhere. He took me, put me in the shower. I have not experienced the best smothered gravy since my dad. And I love to eat. <laughs> I got my cooking from him. But at the same token, to find out that this is a family member, a family member, they had no regards for my father's life. At no point did they have a regard for his life to beat him, to drive him around town, then bury him to cover his body, it's unjust. It's really unjust. I, I, For the life of me, you know, I've had to have counseling dealing with that years ago. It was probably one of the 
things that kept me from just loving, you know, even just loving a man, you know what I'm saying? So I, it took a lot for me to have to deal with this and to know that this person wants to be released and walk on soil and my dad is six feet under soil. I'm not okay with that. I'm not okay with that at all because his life is gone. My kids have no grandfather. My grandkids have no great grandfather. It's unjust. It, I don't, I don't, I have no sympathy for him. I do forgive him. Trust and believe because my God, I serve a good God. And I know. And I just, I want to read something that was. Ms. Lewis, we're going to have to wrap it up, man. I, can I just read this one thing? It, it was from my father. I'll give you about 20 seconds. Okay. It said, your ancestors are with you. Your father is with you and he wants you to know he loves you and he's sorry he wasn't there for you, even though he wanted to be. He couldn't get that bug off his back. He wants you to understand that. There was not one day he went by and he didn't think of you or want to be with you. Said he kept a picture of you in his wallet at all times. He just wished he could have beat the addiction long before he did because he was on track to being more active in you and your children's lives. That was his goal. I don't have that. I don't have that at all. Thank you, ma'am. We, we, we do understand. We appreciate your comments. Thank you. Mr. Lowry, is there anything you'd like to say before the panel votes? I would like to give my heart out to, to the victim family. You know, it, it was made a bad, bad, bad decision. It made a bad, but I was on drugs too, you know? We were all, me and Charlie was on drugs. You know what I'm saying? We were, we were all on drugs. I just hate that Charlie, I'm, I regret these 25 years of being locked up behind somebody else that, that, that I wouldn't even involved in that. I was working. I had a job. I, I wouldn't do no, I wouldn't even hurt him behind no drugs. I wouldn't even do nothing behind, behind drugs. No. You think I'm going to throw my life away behind drugs? That's what I'm trying to tell Derek. Not to throw his life away behind what, what he did to Charlie. And then he didn't want to take the lick. He didn't want to take his charge when, when we all went to court. He could have freed me and my brother. My, my brother had to be with you, with him, and, 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 and something happened. Charlie had been getting him all this time, all them years, and he waited to, this time here to get him, to, to, to do Charlie home now because of somebody else. That wasn't on me. I try to stop David. I tell him, David, David, no, David, no, no. His daddy, his his, uh, his daddy didn't, didn't stop him. His sister didn't stop him. His daddy girlfriend didn't stop him. Me, me and my brother tried to stop him. They, they, he didn't want to listen to me, so he didn't want to listen to his daddy and daddy girlfriend. and sister. They couldn't stop him. They couldn't. I'm, I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry, uh, D.D. And 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 uh, Lucretia, I'm very sorry. My, I I I I think about this all the time, all the time that I'm locked up behind somebody else. I ain't do no no crazy stuff. Uh, uh, I know I sold drugs and I smoked drugs, but I ain't do no crazy stuff like that. Thank you, Mr. Lowry. Appreciate yes, you. Sir. Thank y'all for giving me the opportunity to uh, to come in, in front of y'all. You know, I'm trying to do my best to 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 make it out of here. You know. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Lowry.
It may not have been your idea, but you were a participant in this crime. It you were. Because you were a participant. Yes, ma'am. And uh, you were given the benefit of a manslaughter plea instead of going to trial for, for murder, where you would be serving a life sentence. So you've gotten some benefit uh, from cooperation, but you involved yourself in this crime. And so you have to deal with the consequences. Yes, you have a date of August 6th of 2032. You have a date. And that date could have been whittled down a lot more had you engaged yourself with programming and tried to do things to improve yourself, learn from your mistakes, but you just, for whatever reason, didn't do what you needed to do to work on you. And if for no other reason to earn more credit, uh, you, your disciplinary record isn't great. You've gotten write-ups as recently as last year. Your risk is moderate um, and you have limited programs. And so I just don't think you're ready. So my vote today uh, is to deny because of your institutional record and your lack of programming. Thank you, Mr. Jackson, Ms. Wise. Uh, Mr. Lowry, I, I appreciate uh, I appreciate you today, but it's uh, I concur with my colleague. My vote is the same for the same reason, and and also the victim opposition has been expressed uh, at, this, at today's hearing. Mr. Lowry, you have two votes to deny my vote. Likewise, is to deny for the same reasons as my colleagues have stated. Uh, your parole today has been denied. Good luck to you. Yes, sir. The time is 26. We'll be adjourned at uh, Allen Correctional. Uh, Warden, thank you so much for your help today. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor Bell, thank you as well. You guys stay in the cool uh, uh, of, of your air-conditioned place and don't get outside. It's hot out there. Yes, sir. Thank right. you. Thank you all. Everybody enjoy that last meal. <laughs> we'll, we'll. We're planning it right now. We're planning it. <laughs>
Let her speak. Let them speak. The daughter sharing the few memories that she has about her father. And then reading a note, that's too much to listen to? Shame on you. You know, we, we see a lot of different people, a lot of different hearings, and there are hearings where people do all different types of crimes. And there, you can you can walk look at this hearing and see uh, two of these hearings. They can both be the same type of crime, but someone, one of them seems to understand and have real empathy, have done something through their prison sentence to like where, where you're rooting for them you want them to get released in this case there's nothing here he was being disrespectful through the entire hearing he had his arms crossed he was making faces he was looking up while the victims were talking and like sp saying things and then he his true light comes out he starts going on a rant how he feels he shouldn't even be locked up. How he feels he did nothing wrong. He says, I think about it every day. I think about this every day while I'm locked up for someone else's actions. Not I think about it every day because I could have stopped it and I didn't. Not I'm locked up every day because I lit the match to burn him, to burn his body. Not be, not locked up every day because I, I, I was involved in tying him up and carrying him and leaving him in an abandoned house. Can you imagine dying? You, the thirst he must have felt, the fear, laying on the ground in a house for something you didn't do. He didn't even take it. Those morons. Lost drugs because he hid it in the woods and then blamed him for no reason. And then he's sitting there trying to say, it wasn't my fault. I, I was trying to stop him, but he was telling me it wasn't my business. Dude, take accountability, man. Like Miss Jackson says, he testified against him in court, so he got the manslaughter charge. And can you believe it? He is going to be getting out in 2032. And... It's scary because he's done nothing with his time in prison. He's done nothing. So he's going to get out and then what? These are the kind, it's, it's sad to say if this is the kind of guy who you think we'll, we'll see back very soon. I mean, 2032 is still quite a ways away. Seven, 11, 8, 9. And I don't know if, I don't know if I'll get out. It's like in 10 years, 9 years. I don't know if he'll get out, if they'll, uh, you know, he'll keep applying for parole. But with that attitude, you know, you got to think, how can you, how can you uh, grant someone when they, when they literally are denying culpability at their parole hearing? And he showed a temper in it too. And just, but on March 22nd, 1998, Deputy Steve Rogers, um, Responded to the report of a of a body in a shallow grave. Upon arriving at the scene, he discovered um, the body of an individual who was later identified as Charles Lucky Lewis. Lowry was arrested in September of 1998 after the investigation implicated him and three other defendants. When questioned regarding the death, Lowry admitted that to beating and kidnapping Lewis. And then by, and then burying the body the next day. You know, it was like, you know, even when Miss Jackson was initially asking him the questions, he's like, well, we didn't kill him. We, uh, we, we beat him. And, um, like, he kept denying everything. The whole thing, he was, like, fighting with her. And it was, it was frustrating to listen to. You know, when he first started, he said... Well, my buddy, you know, my friend, he, he was really for, forgetful. And that's how Mr. Lewis died. That's how we started off. He was, and Miss Jackson's like, 
what does being forgetful have to do with Miss Lewis dying? Oh, because he lost his drugs. So, I mean, that's still how he opened it up. My my friend was forgetful. That's how Mr. Lewis died. No, that's not how Mr. Lewis died. He died because you beat him, tied him up, and then left him to die in a home. Miss Jackson was saying, well, his legs were broken, so you carried him. I don't know who said his legs were broken. We carried him because we tied him up. Okay. The home wasn't abandoned. It was there. Everyone was living there. Well, guess what? The home was abandoned. And to the abandoned house where the crime took place. In his statements, Lowry explained that he and his brother, and Derek Mitchell, had gone to Mitchell's father's abandoned house. Here he is still at his day. It's not abandoned. They were all living there. Um, and Lewis were at the house uh, near where Mitchell had earlier hidden his drugs, his narcotics. Sorry, YouTube is now going to demonetize this, whatever. When Mitchell discovered the narcotics missing, he blamed Lewis. Mitchell fired shots in an attempt to get Lewis to confess for taking the narcotics. So he pulls out his weapon, he shoots, shoots to get him to, you know, try to scare him. But Lewis didn't confess because he didn't take the stuff. So Lowry held him. So he held him. And he held him while Mitchell beat him with a piece of wood. So here you are holding the man down while your buddy Mitchell is beating him with a piece of wood and you have the audacity to say that you are you did nothing wrong, that you were locked up for, the, for something that someone else did, that guy should not get out of prison. He takes no accountability and it's scary. Although evidently still conscious, Lewis was placed into the truck on Mitchell's car and kept there as Lowry Mitchell, Michael and Brown, Drove to another residence to see Mitchell's father and his girlfriend. And I want to root for him, you know? I do, but when someone... I can't. <laughs> you don't hold down a man while someone else beats him. And in his mind, he's begging him not to do anything. Okay. Larry tied his hands to a piece of cloth and carried him into the bedroom inside the house because he could not walk. Both his legs were broken due to the earlier beating. Yes, they were broken. They were broken, he's saying. He, and in his mind, he really thinks he's locked up wrongfully. That's just crazy. At the time, Lewis was still responsive to questions. Ari Mitchell and Michael left the scene but Brown were made with Lewis to watch over him. The next morning, Lowry, Mitchell, and Michael went back to the house. Lewis was dead, and Brown was gone. So <laughs> Brown had just, like, left. He was like, oh, yeah, oh, sure, I'm going to sit in this abandoned house with this uh, tied up dying man. I'm sure he uh, thought that was a great idea. The three then located Brown, uh, located Brown, went back to the abandoned house and placed Lewis' body in the trunk of the car. The men drove into a wooded area, took the body out of the trunk, and attempted to burn it after dousing with gasoline. Larry struck the match to start the fire. When the body did not burn completely, the men dug a shallow grave and put the body into it. They returned to the homicide scene and removed the bloody carpet. Mitchell discarded the piece of wood used to beat Lewis. The, stage, uh, the state charged Brown, Larry, Mitchell, and Michael with second degree and aggravated kidnapping. As part of the plea agreement, the state reduced Lowry's charges to manslaughter and second-degree kidnapping and not to charge him as an habitual offender in the exchange for Lowry's promise to testify truthfully against the defendant after sentencing this appeal ensued. Oh, so he, right, he appealed. He wasn't happy with his sentence. He thought he would get a better deal. Yeah, no, dude. You're lucky, like Ms. Jackson, you're lucky you got this deal. I wonder how much Brown, what is Brown's? 
Corey Brown. I do want to. I am curious to see what sentence he got. Let's see. Found something, but it doesn't look like it doesn't look like the same Corey Brown. Um, because it's on uh, twenty thirteen. Yeah, I don't know. I guess it's not, you know, who knows? Maybe he got a lighter sentence and, but anyways. So what did he, he, so he, yeah. So why this is here is because, you know, he took a plea deal is that he thought that she should have gotten a lesser sentence. It's too excessive. Uh, he thought that he would get, Less time because even you know of course even that mind that mind he he did nothing wrong he did nothing wrong it wasn't his fault he just held him down it's the same thing one person holds him down the other beats him I would even argue if you hold him down it's even more personal the guys you're struggling with him you're you're feeling his body with each impact. I'll put the link in the description. I don't know. It's it's like something's wrong with him. He's missing. It's like, how do you? And he lit the match. You know, light a man's body on fire. Really, I think, I think just to add to the insult to injury, it was just the way Mr. Mirabella ran that hearing. You, you, you had to let them speak. You know, I'm so upset about that. Anyways. Please help with the YouTube thing. And uh, with that, I'll let you go.